back in 1969, I had finished my psychiatric residency just a year earlier. I was still in uh, formal psychoanalysis four times a week. I had fallen in love with a wonderful woman and gotten married in September of 1969. And it was around that time, maybe a few months earlier, that I was approached by a high school buddy, a guy named Bill Young, who at that time in Chicago was heading up the, the, the top commercial music production facility in Chicago called Comtrack. They just made commercials and jingles for so many places, really quality, quality work. And he approached me and said, look, Danny, I know that at this time you're really immersed in, in all this kind of genre music, trying to bring things together. I think it would be very exciting if, if you'd be willing, and I'd be willing to finance a recording session for this, if you'd be willing to write some new music that embraces this integration of rock and jazz and freeform music and electronics, all this stuff that you're doing, but add the element of writing lyrics. And I'd like you and, and Mel and, and and George, Mel Graves and George Mars, these are guys I've been playing with now for a couple of years at this point. I'd like you guys to go to the studio, record this music, and just as a demo, sing the lyrics just so I'll have something to, to, to go on because what I want to do is to make a, a small custom run of LPs and I'm going to shop this thing to record labels and maybe also talk to individual professional singers. The idea is to get a label to finance finishing the album with professional singers and then if the album begins to take off at all we'd launch a tour and we'd call call the group Zeitgeist, which is German for Spirit of the Times. It actually was the title of the last album I had made for Columbia, of that title, so it kind of appealed to me. So I started writing new music and, and working on it with George and Mel, and in November, we went into this studio in San Francisco, Pacific High Recording, and in one long weekend, we recorded this album. And uh, we called the album The Name of This Terrain. And Bill Young then set about shopping this album. It turned out there were no takers. The album was so far out and had so many genre in it, even though it, I felt it was powerfully integrated, record labels said, we don't have an established conduit for this. We, we like the music, but how are we gonna sell it? So they, they didn't, they didn't feel there was any marketability at that time for it. So the album went on the shelf. And I sort of forgot about it. Everybody forgot about it, I think. We went on about our musical business and George and Mel and I went on doing instrumental work in recordings and concertizing. And then in 2003, my dear friend Bill Young died of cancer. And somebody cleaning up his office took a bunch of stuff to a Salvation Army somewhere in Chicago. And in that package of stuff was a stack of these demo LPs. And what happened was that act set it off a very low grade international buzz about this album. I began getting calls from fans, collectors, record labels wanting either to hear or buy or release this album. And I was really taken aback because this was not a finished product. This was not an album that was ready to go out on the market in my mind, it was a demo. We wanted to finish it with professional singers. So in every case when people would, would contact me, I would beg them not to disseminate the music if you've got the album, you want to hear it, that's fine, but please don't copy it, don't give it to anybody. It really was just a demo. So for years, the beginning in that 2003, I was fending off a dozen or so calls a year and then eventually getting emails about it. There was one guy in the Netherlands that wrote me an email saying, I will pay you a thousand dollars for a copy of this album. I, I couldn't believe it, man. So 
And amongst these people that had called me, there was a fellow named Ethan Allipat, who had a record label called Now Again Records. And he was very polite and very persistent in his enthusiasm for this recording. And he would call me every few years. And I would try to just staunchly and politely tell him why I didn't want this album released. It was a demo. We weren't professional singers. And he would tell me, Danny, I respect that. But, you know, I, I think this album is actually one of the important albums of the 20th century. And I think the fact that you guys don't have trained vocal cords it, it, it is irrelevant compared to the immediacy emotionally of what you're doing. And, and I don't know that professional singers would have sounded as good as you guys with the freshness of what you brought to this thing. I said, I appreciate that, Ethan, but, you know, please, it, it, it's not for release. So finally, he circled back again in 2020. And I did the same dialogue with him, hung up the phone. But this time I turned to my wife, Josephine, and said, Honey, you know, we haven't listened to this album in 50 years. Maybe we ought to just put it on again. And it wasn't easy to do because I had actually physically destroyed my stack of demo LPs because I didn't want the same thing to happen to me if I were to get hit by a truck and somehow a new stack would go to another thrift store. <laughs> so, so I fortunately, though, I had made a master CD from this album. A very fine engineer in L.A. had done this for me. So I took this master CD and put it in the CD player. and We listened to it. And Brent, I have to say, I was really knocked out. I. I hadn't remembered the the freshness of the concept, which still seemed fresh, and the the passion of the the whole production, and it was just a a, a, a huge spirit of adventure that pervaded the whole thing, and so. You know, I, I heard the mistakes in the singing. I heard that I didn't hit every pitch. Okay, that that seemed on this re-listening far less important to me than the, the totality of this experience. I said, man, this, this thing is worth hearing. This is worth getting this album out. So I talked to Ethan Alipat. He was surprised and delighted. And we began getting together and talking about it. And so it's, it's taken a couple of years to actually make the thing happen. But uh, the album is out. The street day, the street date of the album was May six, so it's just, just on the street, which really means it's on the internet, available in CD and LP forms, and I'm just really excited to actually have this new, very old album finally out there.